DC Multiverse! Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today we have the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Clayface Batman and Batwoman action figure three pack to take a gander at. Right off the bat, you can see that the same thing that happened with the Atomic Skull Superman multi-pack has happened here, and that is, well, it's a it's a black box with the, the front and no window. I don't exactly know why Todd decided to break away from that, but at first you might think, oh, it's a sleeve, but you can see it's not. Do you remember back in the day when I used to show every side of the box? I am so glad that I don't do that anymore. <clears throat> he says, as he's currently doing with this current video right here, Look, I'm even showing you the bottom of the box. Haven't done that in a while. And there is the barcode. Really though, this is the best bit of the box right here, and that's the artwork on the back. Anyway, let's just cut this bad boy open. All right, you're gonna cut the tape here, and cut the tape here, and then carefully, ha ha! Ooh, look at those accessories. And Batman in lighter gray, Turd Monster encased in Mr. Freeze ice, and Batwoman. All right, let's pull, get this out. Oh, oh that is, that's a lot of snippy doos. Looks like it's time to break out the tiny scissors. Snippity snip. Clayface, the Batman, Batwoman, and poopy stained Batarangs. All three of these cheese doodles are pretty fantastic. I know that Batman and Clayface are technically repaints or recolors. You can see the Clayface alongside Clayface here. Well, the current one is a much more brighter, more like, you know, healthy poopy clay color. And the Batman is like five shades of gray lighter. And he doesn't have the black strips on his utility belt in comparison to the last one. And this Batman doesn't have a five o'clock shadow. Now, just coming back to Clayface, I will say that I kind of wish that the wash that they put over Clayface, like this looks really good. And it's such a simple thing to do. Just dry brush some, some lighter brown over top of, you know, the already brown. But then, like, there's nothing on the side here, and there's nothing on the side here, and that's, it's weird. Like, I just, I just sort of wish they, they continued it. And the same thing with the back. Like, the back just looks like, like, melted chocolate and muddy poop, but there's no paint over it. And I feel like this lighter paint right here really does bring out those details that much more. I mean, it's a cool sculpt, but I just would have liked to see this continue around here. La, la, la. If you missed the first release of Clayface, this is actually a pretty good way to get your hand on it. I just want to really light up the inside of Clayface, Clayface's mouth there. I mean, you know with this guy not to expect anything that's like super articulated. It's going to have all your basic articulation points. You know, rounded this and uh, crunchy that, but I mean, this is, you know, I would look at this and say it's an articulated action figure that's highly detailed that's also, you know, slightly part statue. I mean, not really. You can, you know, it's got all the joints, like I'm saying, it's not a statue, but there's not a lot you can do with this guy as far as posability because of the feet. This is the same back grapnel that Batman has came with before. They have the back grapple open so that it doesn't look like a bang bang gun. No guns allowed in any of the toys. Because this is a lighter gray Batman, there'll be those of you out there who really like the darker gray who would just totally want to pass this up, while other folks like the lighter gray, and this is going to be completely up your alley. It is all the exact same sculpt as I mentioned, which is good because for one, this is a fantastic sculpt of Batman. Two, this is probably the best of all of the Batman head sculpts that McFarlane has produced. I think that it captures Batman in the comic books perfectly. And the inside of the cape has a nice shade of purple, which it's supposed to for Rebirth era. Some folks may feel like not having the black stripes on his pouches for his utility belt here is inaccurate. And there are times when they were colored in black and there were times when they weren't. This is a fantastic figure. I know that it's well ar articulated because I did the articulation for the previous one, and having the cape go over the shoulders just where it does is perfect. You've got the rounded hinge with the socket, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, the wrists are articulated enough. <clears throat> These ones are kind of tight, but they're articulated enough. You got the head that swivels around like that on that peg 
quite nicely. You got the groin, it's got one of those, and you've actually got quite a bit more motion here than we get with a lot of McFarlane's figures. That approximation of a thigh cut, the legs really on this guy are quite nice as far as articulation. Some people have argued that this is probably the best Batman that McFarlane has made, and I would say this is definitely up there with one of his very best attempts. And then you've got down here the double jointed knees. McFarlane's very good at doing these. They crunch up quite nicely. And then we have the ankle with the pivot and the toe on the rounded hinge. Pretty cool figure. I can always use variations of versions of Batman that I very much like. The only thing that I will point out that I think is really sucky about this Batman is when they glued mine together. I don't know if it's showing up. Let me just get some light on it. What the heck is that? What is going on there? So I'm going to have to take that apart and fix it because that's just all kinds of wrong. And then of course, finally we have Batwoman, a character that a lot of people are super excited, including myself, to add to their Bat family. This is almost, I would say, a perfect rendition of her. It just has a few places where I think they could have done things a little bit better. For one, you've got the head, which has that big clump of red hair, which is fine, but they should have made the hair a bit thinner at the back because when you stand her up straight, she wants to look slightly down and you can't tip her head back at all. You have to move her body back and then she looks like she's like, all right, ladies, chin up, boobs out. I'm sure it'll be as easy as just removing some of the plastic underneath her hair where no one's gonna see so that it will sit just a little bit more flat on the back of her shoulders there. But I really think they did a great job with that face sculpt. I have zero complaints about this hole up here in the face area. I think that it wonderfully, and I love her red hair. It's actually red. They didn't sissy out and make it too dark or make it almost brown like they did with Wally. They actually made her have nice bright orange hair. We have a brand new sculpted belt for Batwoman here, if I'm not mistaken, as well as gauntlets. And I don't know if we've actually seen this launcher before. This might actually be a new launcher. Now, some people have also said that we have all reused parts, aside from what I've mentioned. Oh, and the boots. The boots are clearly what I would, I think those are brand new as well. I don't think these have been reused. But the body itself does take very much from Catwoman. We can see again the lines that Supergirl had right here where her thigh high boots, they meet up here. And then we've also got the zipper line from the mid area of the Catwoman suit. And of course we have the same arms, upper arms here as the Catwoman suit from where her high gloves met just over her bicep. That is kind of sucky. I do sort of wish that they would just have a dedicated female body buck that doesn't have the remnants. However, you can't really tell. It doesn't really stand out to me. So I know I'm not upset about it. Now, if you're thinking that her cape is also a reuse, you would be mistaken. At first glance, it does definitely look like you've got a reuse in cape here, but if you look closer, you can actually see fine details that Batgirl's cape does not have. Like these little tiny rolls right here. You got one here. You've got one on this side right here. You've got one here. And you can see that Batgirl's cape has nothing of the sort. So this actually is a newly sculpted cape. She has her own thing going on here. And of course, the torso, the chest area is a newly sculpted piece because this bat on her chest is not an inlaid piece. It's just part of the overall sculpt. That and the fact that she's got that, you know, the, the fabric stretchy mark between her, uh, her boob. Bruh. I think she's a pretty fine looking figure. And you know what? I haven't really mucked around with her a lot and bent her over and around and stuff, but I'm going to assume that she's very well articulated because Catwoman was very well articulated, is very well articulated. So I'm gonna assume that this figure is, you know, along those lines. Oh, that's the one I always check though. Mm -mm -mm. Not so good. Time to keep, time to get better at that. I keep saying it, but everything else for articulation seems to be pretty good for this figure. So yeah, I, I, I really like this. This is the one I was the most excited about. So what do I think about this here three pack? 
Batman and Clayface, even though they're reuses. I think that they are fantastic, and I welcome them to my collection, and I most of all welcome Batwoman to my collection, because I have now another character to add to my Bat family. And as I always say, we can always use more characters to add on to our major families. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and Flash, I'll take them all. Anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions and viewpoints of the new McFarlane Toys Batman, Clayface, and Batwoman 3-pack. I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you found it useful in helping you make your decision for your purchase of these folks, and I will see you with the next one. Have a DC day, everybody. Take care.